Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our first Aid for Kids live session this morning. We are pretty so excited to bring this to you. My name is Alison Osborne, and I work here at St John, and I have my daughter, Olivia, who's helping out this morning. Hi, Liv. How are you? Good. How are you, Mum? I'm good. Thank you. So we are here this morning to bring you a special first aid session about bandaging. Now, some of you might recognise my red shirt. Okay, we've come. We normally would come to you in the schools, but today we can't, we can't do that at the moment. So today we're coming to you straight live into your lounge rooms, which is pretty exciting because that means you can stay in your jammies if you haven't quite got ready for school yet, and sit in your comfy lounge and do this in the comfort of your home. So we still have a few people arriving this morning. So we are going to just let them come in. Hi, please press the like button when you come in. I'm sorry, it just came up on my screen. I couldn't see you for a moment. So today, like I said, we're going to come to you in your lounge room and we're going to learn about bandaging. Before we start, I need people to make sure they have a bandage of some sort. So if you've got, maybe you've got a bandage, Maybe you've gone to your first aid kit and got one. If you don't have a bandage, you need something like a piece of material that you could use that's long and thin, all right? I would suggest a scarf, but maybe not a big, thick, woolly scarf because that's going to be a bit hard to use, maybe just a thin cotton scarf. If you've gone to your first aid kit, maybe you've gone and found that there's not just one bandage in your first aid kit, there's a lot of bandages in your first aid kit. <gasps> Which one do you pick? And why do we have so many bandages in our first aid kits? Well, the reason is simple. We've got lots of bandages in our first aid kit because we've got, they need to do lots of different things. And each bandage has a different purpose for use. So today, I want you, if you've got a few and you're wondering which one to use, I want you to pick the white one that looks like this. You might find if it's still in your wrapper that it has the word crepe bandage on it. So it might look a little bit like that one. Okay, because this one, these ones are good. They're nice and stretchy. They're pretty easy to use. They're not too thick. And they're usually ones that we use for a lot of general uses. So this is the one that we want today. Hi and welcome to put more people as they come on in. Thank you for joining us this morning. Click like as you come in. It's great to have you joining us this morning. As I said, my name is Ali and this is Olivia and we are going to give you a first aid session on bandaging this morning. For those of us who have uh, in school, and you probably recognise our shirts, like I said before, you've had us come into your school before. If you've had us come to school before, can you just say yes or give us a wave if you've had us come and teach you first aid? Because normally we don't do this in your lounge room. We come to your school and into your classrooms and teach you about first aid. Can anyone think maybe, remember, you might have to start those brains a bit early in the morning. And remember something that we might have taught you when we came into your school? Do you want to think of anything? Oh, thinking, thinking. Does anyone remember us teaching you about someone lying still on the floor, not answering? That's right, and how we had to use the doctor's A, B, C, D action plan to help them out. Well done, that's right. So that's what we come in and normally teach you about. So today, though, we're going to learn about bandaging because first aid is all about helping people. And it's about the first help we, then we give them when they're hurt and unwell. So when do you think we might need to use a bandage? What kind of injuries would we need to use a bandage for, do you think? Have a think. If you know the answer, feel free to put it up. That'd be great. Okay. We might use a bandage. Have you ever been running in the yard playing tiggy and you're running really fast and you didn't see the tree root on the ground? And you fall over and then you give your ankle a bit of a twist, it's a bit sore, a bit swollen, you might need a bandage for that one. Sometimes we might need bandages if we've got a big cut that we live and it's a bit big for a Band-Aid or it's bleeding lots, we often use bandages to help apply some pressure, okay, on the wound. Sometimes we also need bandages if we've got them in places that you can't put a Band-Aid because you can't really put, put a band head. That's right. You can't put a bandage on, band -aid on your head, can you? Get stuck in your hair. That's right. So we might have, to, and if it's bleeding lots, we might have to use a bandage. All right. Has everybody got their bandages ready? Now, if you've got your bandage or your piece of material, I need you to make sure, first off, 
that it's rolled nice and neatly like this. Okay, if your bandage is looking a little bit like this, that's not very good. That's not very good. So you need to roll it up, okay? Now today, we're going to have everybody in the same classroom together. Instead of all the preps together like we normally would or all the grade twos and threes, we've got everybody in together. So if you, brothers and sisters, older brothers and sisters, if you're around today, it'd be really great if you could help out. If you are younger today and you've got mum or dad around, that'd be great because you might need a little bit of a hand with some of this. It gets a little bit tricky. I also um, brought in another helper today because it's really good to practice these things. So I've also brought in my mate, George. This is George, our teddy, okay? And he's got nice, big, thick arms, which is good to practice your bandaging on. So if you want to grab a teddy, you can do that either now or later because teddies and dolls are great for practicing your bandaging on later. So we're going to show you before we go how to bandage on George. We'll put George down for the minute. We'll start with bandaging on Olivia. So let's get started. When we start, we need to have our bandage all rolled up, like I said before, okay? Because it's very hard if our bandage is like this, okay, to roll it around and get it all nice. It gets a little bit tangled and nasty and that's not really going to do anything, is it? Okay, so the first thing we need to make sure is that our bandage is always rolled nicely. The second thing we need to make sure when we're bandaging is that our bandage is the right way up, okay? I want you to have a look at this bandage. Can you have a look? Can you see it looks like a certain animal creature? Anyone have a guess of what that might be? Looks a bit like a snail, doesn't it? That's right. We've got our, the snail's body here and then we've got his big shell up here. And he's a happy snail because he can move along like this. All right, if we tip him upside down. He's a sad snail. Yeah, he's a sad snail. We don't want a sad snail. We don't want a sad snail. That's right, because look, he's sitting on his shell and he can't move because his body's up off the ground. So when we're bandaging, we want a happy snail. We want it to look like this because we actually need something to hold on to. We need to grip this part here, the shell, because that helps us um, keep the bandage at the right tension. A tension basically is just how tight it is. We want to make sure our bandages are firm. So not loose, not tight just right. So we need to have something to hold on to. All right, is everyone ready? If you've got your person, if you are an older person, older child now, it'd be great if you could be the patient. So if you could sit on a chair and be really still for your younger brothers and sisters, that would be super great. Okay, no wriggling like jelly. All right, you've got to stay nice and still. Mums and dads, if you're the patient, you've got to be nice and still too. All right, no moving. And we might need, if you are the patient, we might need you You just help with your hands a little bit too. All right, kids, are you ready? Let's go. We've got our bandage rolled. We've got our happy snail. What we're going to do now is we've got to make sure we anchor our bandage. And that just basically means we've got to have a starting point because if we don't anchor it and we try and wrap it, it's just going to follow us around like this. Look, nothing's happening. It's just going round and round. That's no good, okay? So... We've got to have our set point, our anchor. So we've got to wrap it around it. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. So we need both our hands. I'm going to grab my left hand. So I'm using my left hand, but it doesn't matter if you use your right, whatever's comfortable for you. And I'm going to place my thumb on the, the body part of the snail. Then with my right hand, I've got the, the, the shell part in my right hand, and I'm going to wrap that around now i want you to see underneath i'm actually going to catch the shell with my left hand like that all right i'm going to do it again because this is where it gets it is a bit tricky so place the body on the arm grab your left your left hand and put your thumb on the body bit okay with your other hand you're going to wrap the shell bit underneath and grab it with your left hand all right, so at the moment, I've got my thumb on the body bit and I've got the rest of the shell of the snail in my hand. I can swap over and put my right thumb there and then I'm going to bring the bandage up to the top like that and grab it back in my right hand. Now, how are you going? You got all that? It's a bit tricky, isn't it? If you're finding it a bit hard, patience, okay, you can actually give some a hand here. Hang on, Liv. All right, you can actually hold it. 
okay and then your the you the person the first data can just deal with the bandage and then it might be a bit easier for you you all you have to do is pass the bandage from one hand to the next and back up like that all right now we've got an anchor see now we can put the bandage down and it's not following us around okay so now we're going to just start wrapping it around so go from one hand to the next like this okay can you see how that bandage is nice and flat? All right, we've got no wrinkles in it, which is really good. And we've got our edges are nice and, and flat next to the, the edge before, which means that it's at the right tension. You know that big word I used before? Basically, it's just at the right pressure. We don't want it too tight and we don't want it too loose. If we have it too tight, okay, all right, that's got, they, it's going to be too, too firm and it's going to be uncomfortable for the person. If we have it too loose, we're going to start getting crinkled edges like this. Let me just show you. It's going to be a little bit hard to see. You see now that there's, there's little crinkles and gaps in, that, in, in those uh, layers, yeah? It's not, they're not nice and flush against the ones before. It is a little bit hard to see, I know. I'm trying my best to do it as loose as possible for you. And when we do that, all right, that, the bandage isn't actually going to be providing any support, okay? So we need to make sure that when we're wrapping it around from one hand to the other, that you're giving it just a little bit of a tug. So can you see a little bit of a pull and around, pulling it again and around. How are you going? That's it. It's probably best to start somewhere nice and flat. I should have said that before, like the arm. I'm going to go up like that all the way once the bandage is finished we're going to just today we're just going to tuck it underneath like that okay you can if you if you're doing this in first aid, you might have some tape and we can tape it but today we're just going to tuck it under so the important things when we're bandaging is to remember that we have our bandage rolled that we have when we start bandaging we have it as a happy snail okay with this bit up here so we can grab onto it when we're putting it on the person's arm, we've got to make sure that it's not too tight and not too loose and that we're actually pulling that bandage a bit to make it at the right tension. And we're going to wrap it up like this. The other thing, and this is important for older, older kids to, learn, to pay attention to because I'm going to talk about this a little bit more later, is the layers. And we want to try and make those layers as even as possible as we wrap, okay? How did you go? Was that okay? Was it a bit tricky? You might need to do some practice. So let's have another go, all right? Unwrap your bandage. Now today we've got lots of bandages, so we're not going to have to roll ours, but you might have to spend a couple of minutes just rolling it, all right? If your mum or dad, again, older brothers or sisters, if you could help do this, that would be really helpful. Just make it go a bit quicker. I reckon it might be Livy's turn to show you just how easy, because I'm an adult, I'm a big person, but I reckon that kids can do this as well, which is why we're teaching you today. So Livy, here we go. So kids, get your, get your patient ready. If you need to swap patients, that's fine. Make sure you're bandaging on the arms somewhere nice and flat. Got your snails, that's it. Livy's got her anchor going. Look, she's done that beautifully. Now she's going to wrap it. Oh, nice work, Liv. She might have done this before. So again, can you see how that all the layers are matching up? She's got a nice even space and she hasn't got any crinkles. She hasn't got it too loose or too tight. She's going all the way up. Just like that, that's great. And tuck it under. Beautiful. There we go, look, we've got our matching band bandages on. Well done. How did you go? Was that a bit easier? And you might find that you have to practice this. It is a little bit trickier than it looks, trying to get it round and round and getting it at the right tension. I suggest this is where your teddy bear or your doll comes in, okay? Because mum and dad and big brothers and sisters are not always around to have a practice on and they might be, maybe they're not very good at sitting still. <laughs> Was your mum or dad good at sitting still? Or did they wriggle a bit when you were trying to do it? Whereas Teddy's a very good sitting still. So can we bring George back up, Liv? 
okay? George is actually very good at sitting still, okay? And so he's really good to practice on. If you've got a teddy, as I said, something with nice straight arms, you don't want an arm with a bend in it because that, that is a little bit harder to do. And when we're practicing, we want to make it as easy as possible so that we can get better at the skill and then we can get a little bit more challenging. So I would suggest starting practicing on maybe the teddy's arm or leg if you've got a nice straight leg. But then if you get really good at that, if you are just been practicing lots and you've been, you might like the challenge of bandaging other places. Where else could we bandage George, Liv? We could bandage George on his head. We could bandage on his head. Where else? Tummy. On his tummy. Yep, that's right. So let's bandage his head today because heads are a bit tricky, trickier and George has a rather large head. Yes. So you might like to have a bit of a challenge at bandaging your teddy's head or your tummy as well. All right. Round and round. Poor George, he's in the wars. There we go. Well, it's pretty hard to not let go of your, your bandage sometimes too, isn't it? There we go. Yep, it's sucked in. So there's an idea for you guys if you want to have a practice with your, your bandaging, okay? So you might like to even do that now if you want. I'm going to show something to the bigger kids now that's a little bit trickier. So feel free to, to keep to keep, stay and keep watching and having a go. Um, you're more than welcome. Maybe this is the time where we swap over. So if you're a bit older, maybe grade four to grade six, this is a chance for you to have a go at another tech bandaging technique. If you think you can sit really still as a patient, younger kids, maybe you can hop on the chair and be the patient for this next bit, but you've got to sit really still. No jiggling and wiggling like jelly, okay? All right. Yep, we're going to unbandage you, Liv, because we're going to wrap you up again in a different way. All right. So now I'm actually going to teach you a technique called the figure eight bandage. We use this a lot in first aid, particularly when we're dealing with areas such um, as wrists and ankles that have bends in them, all right? We're wanting to support these areas. They're often areas that um, get hurt a lot. Or we can break them. I don't know if anyone's broken their wrist or their ankle before, um, but you know, we often sprain these areas, so we need a bit of support, okay, when they get injured. So grab your bandage, make sure it's rolled, everybody. Okay, great, make sure we've got our happy snails. We're still st sticking with the same principles that we taught before, okay? And we're still gonna do start with the same thing, all right? So we're actually going to start by putting, doing an anchor. So we're gonna go to the wrist area and we're gonna do our anchor. So I want you to do that again for me now. Okay, and then I want you to go around so that you've got your bandage on the, whoops, sorry, go around. So you've got your bandage on the inside. I'm just gonna, sorry guys, I've got somebody on, there we go. So let me just show you that again. So we're gonna do our anchor, you're gonna go around like you did. I want you to go around again, once more, and so that your bandage is on the inside of the wrist, like this, okay? Actually, sorry, Libby, I just realised I've got to do it. The other way, this way. All right, now what I want you to do, okay, is I want you to actually bring your bandage. Uh, can you actually leave mm -hmm. with this hand? All right. Sorry, everybody. We're going to bring your bandage up towards the little finger at an angle. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, okay? Because we've got to try and keep that bandage as flat as we can. So you've got to bring it up at an angle, trying to keep the creases out. Then you're going to come behind the hand through the thumb and back down like this, all right? So now you've got a loop or a figure of eight. Can you see that? Then you're going to do the same, bring it around the back and go up and over like that. How did you go? Did you get that done? It is a bit tricky. I'll show you again in a minute. Then we're going to 
now we've done that. Now we're going to just keep going, but we're going to drop the angle of the bandages a little bit. So that's when we've got our layers. So we want to try and keep these layers e even, which means we need to keep the gap between the layers about the same. So we're going to do the same technique. We're going to just keep your wrist still there, Liv. That's it. Just wrap it down like that. So we're going to keep our layers the same. We're going to keep dropping the bandage down. So keep that figure of eight going, but moving it down the wrist, try and keep that support even all the way down and keep those layers even. So take the bandage off and have another go because it is a little bit tricky. And I started on my opposite side, which was a bit hard. So it's probably good when you're practicing this to do it on your preferred side. So again, get our bandage, anchor it around, and go around again until, until it's on the inside of the wrist. So opposite to the little finger, okay? So you want it on this side because you're going to go out across to that, that little finger. So let's go again. You're going up at an angle towards that little finger and then around behind the hand through the thumb and back down. So you want to see that figure of eight. And then as we do it, we're going to just drop the angle a little bit, moving down the wrist. <laughs> That's it. Doing that figure of eight all the way down, okay? And making sure that we've got our layers. And once again, once you've finished, you can just tuck it under. Now, this one is probably a, a bit harder to obviously practice on the teddy. You're going to need someone, uh, a real person, particularly with, with a wrist, okay, um, to have a practice on. And again, if you're finding that really hard, I'd make sure you start with something like this on a nice flat surface and practice those techniques of, of nice tension, nice even layers. Once you can do that and you can keep a hold of your bandage, because I reckon a few of you might have dropped it on the way around, have you today? It's a little bit, I did say, it's a little bit tricky. It's hard to keep holding it from one hand to the next. So start by practicing on here, okay? Or practice these ones on your teddy or your doll. This is it's great to do that. And then once you've mastered that, all right, then work up to your figure of eight bandage. I would start on the wrist because it is a bit easier than the ankle. All right. Obviously, our ankles and our feet have even um, more angle on them and they can be a bit harder to, to get right. So I would start by practicing your figure of eight, okay, on a wrist. Remember, you've got to anchor it first and then loop it around, okay, up towards the little finger round and through and doing that like a, just like a figure of eight. Okay, round and round. Once you've got that pretty good, then you can probably move on to the ankle because it is good. We hurt our ankles a lot. Okay, I'm forever strapping my children's ankles. Okay, so it's really good to a really good skill to learn and to practice. But I would start, you know, graduate up. So start with this and move to the wrist with your figure eight and then go to your ankle. I hope that that's been helpful today and you've had fun learning. Have you enjoyed having a go and learning, learning a new skill? It's been great to have you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. A big thank you to Livy and to George for helping out this morning. We are hoping to be back in schools really, really soon. Okay, so watch out for us. We're just waiting for um, like everybody else for schools to, to go back. In the meantime, if you want to keep your first aid skills and be ready to go for when we come back into schools, we have our, our game, our first aid action hero game. I know if you've had us at your schools before, you would have heard us mention this. This is a great game, parents. It's a free game. You can download it on the App Store or Google Play, and it is designed to help, help kids learn about their first aid, and it goes through the action plan, that D-R-S-A-B-C-D. Um, and we'd love for you to have a go, learn those skills and practice them. If you've done this before and you're going, oh, I've done the game, fear not. We are running a competition. So we are looking for the three highest scores on the game. So 
download your game, have a practice, okay, and, and then um, you can enter the competition. The details and the link will be on our Facebook page shortly, so fear not. It's pretty easy to find out where to go. And if you get a score that you think is really high, all right, get mum and dad to take a picture of that and down and upload it onto the, the link that is on our Facebook page and enter the competition. Our three highest scores will win a special prize of a Johnny Bear, a little Johnny Bear, and a first aid kit, okay? So it's pretty exciting. I'm going to give you three tips, three little tips for how to get a high score. All right, you ready? Tip one, you've got to stay on the track a long time. The longer you stay on the track, the more points you get, okay? Second tip, you've got to collect coins. So the more coins you get, the more points you get. So stay on the track a long time, collect points. But that's not, that's not it. That's not the last bit. That's not even the hardest part. The third part is you've got to make sure you do your first aid when you're your bike rider has an accident, you've got to do the first aid correctly and within the time frame, all right? So you've got to make sure that when you're asked to do something, like check for breathing or do the CPR, that you're doing it as accurately as possible and within the time frames that they give you. Some of the activities, Countdown has a little timer. So there's my three tips, everybody, all right? Stay on the track as long as you can. Collect as many coins as you can and do your first aid as accurately as possible, as best you can. All right. Once you think you've got a good score, what are we going to do? Liv, we're going to go. Yeah, we're going to go to the Facebook page. We're going to find the link. Okay. And we're going to take a screenshot and upload our score. And we will announce the winners 29th of May. Um, so that's pretty exciting. So get on board, learn your first aid, and we look forward to seeing you soon in the schools. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. We hope you've had fun. And remember, you've now learned a really important skill of bandaging. You will be able to help somebody. The first help that they might need when they hurt their ankle all right, is to put a bandage, some ice, and rest it up. So thank you, well done, and enjoy the rest of your day. See ya.